Hey guys, so I'm not going to be able to probably put out another long video for a couple weeks because I'm super busy. Life's a little crazy. It's awesome, but it's crazy. There's my boy Chester over there. He's saying hi. <laughs> but anyway, um, I had a video suggestion um, for what should I wear to a horseback riding lesson. So this particular individual is wanting to get into riding lessons this summer and want to know what to wear. So obviously there's Western lessons and English lessons. English is like your your traditional dressage, jumping, that sort of stuff. Um, Western lessons are more like, especially trail riding, um, just learning how to handle a horse and whatever. Some more geared towards trail riding. There's like cow horse stuff, there's reining, there's gymkhana, rail racing, like there's everything in Western, um, which Western has the saddle horn on it. Um, I'll try to put it, a picture of a Western saddle here and English doesn't have this, the saddle horn and it has stirrup irons instead of leather stirrups. So I'll try to put a picture here as well. Um, so obviously like there's a difference. I am a part-time riding lesson instructor. I mean, it's like my main job, I guess. So it's not technically part-time, but also hours wise it is part-time. But anyway, um, so I teach Western riding lessons, but I have personally ridden English a couple times, well, more than a couple times. So I know a little bit on that aspect, but Today we're just going to cover Western riding lessons. So obviously this is on a case by case basis. Different places and facilities will require different things. These are just the things that I either require or recommend. Um, so I kind of follow this rule, these rules a little bit uh, just because it makes my life as a horse rider easier. And so when you're learning everything, these things will make your life a little easier too, probably. So. I'm just going to go head to toe um, what I have on me right now and why, you know, these are good things, but all they're also alternatives. So anyway, starting with my head. A helmet is a great tool. Um, highly recommend having a helmet. Um, protects your brain, protects your noggin. Um, get one that's in date and that is safe. You can also get an equestrian helmet not a bike riding helmet, you want an equestrian helmet, they're built different and they cover more aspects of your noggin than a bike helmet will because bikes are meant for you just falling over. Um, equestrian helmets are meant for you like flying through the air and bashing your head, getting stepped on, um, falling at least five feet, um, well four to five feet, but your head will usually fall about five feet or more. Um, so these are a lot more rugged than your bicycle helmet. So get an equestrian helmet if you're riding with a helmet. Um, a lot of places require them. Not all, but a lot of places require them. If you're not riding with a helmet, have a hat on. If you're just working around the place and you're not riding, also have a hat on. Um, cowboy hats like this one. This one's made by the cow lot. Um, well, it's a Rodeo King hat shaped by the cow lot. I had it custom shaped. It's a little bit bent up um, because I've fallen on my head with it on. So, um, you know, another reason helmet because you'll crunch your cowboy hat. Um, but anyway, um, so having a hat with a brim, either a cowboy hat or your regular ball cap will work, but you want to like shade your face and your eyes. It just saves your saves your eyes a lot. Um, also, um, sunglasses. So, and good sunglasses, I would recommend. Sure, you can get away with like your gas station glasses and whatever, but um, your gas station glasses can break and I have had them break. And, you know, obviously I haven't had any like injuries to my eyes, but I have heard stories of people getting like falling on their face and their glasses breaking and poking them in the face. And so, um, if you're wearing glasses, especially sunglasses, have good ones if you can. You, know, you can get away with the regular ones, but um, if you can get good ones, do that. Um, especially if you have blue eyes, like the sun will kill you. Um, 
from experience. So uh, you can get sunglasses, wear sunglasses. If you have prescription glasses, wear ones that have the warranty on them just in case they break. Um, so yeah. Not that you're going to get bucked off, but it's a possibility and it's a, when you're learning, you're probably going to fall off at least once. I don't know anybody who's seriously ridden that hasn't fallen off. Eventually you're going to fall off. That's just the name of the game. But, so, anyway, just protect your head, protect your eyes, protect your face. Anyway, um, next, jewelry. Um, I don't recommend wearing earrings or necklaces while you're riding. You can. I have done it before. But it is a hazard. First off, your stuff can break. It, it's easy to break stuff out here. Um, also, um, necklaces, like you can, I mean, most necklaces will break, but you can still catch yourself um, on stuff, and that's not very comfortable. And you can rip earrings out. Um, I haven't ripped an earring out doing horse stuff, but I have ripped them out in just normal life. So horse stuff is like a little extra um, dangerous than just normal life. So um, wearing earrings isn't the best. Like other sports, you can even tape them up. Like if you just got your ears pierced, you can put band-aids over your ears just to protect your e like the ears from the earrings being caught on stuff. Not that it's going to happen, but it can happen. And so that's just a way to protect yourself. Um, jewelry, like on your hands, like I wear a ring a lot. Um, so especially when you're riding, Take your rings off because if you bust your knuckles on something, whether you fall or you're just working with a horse a little bit, and sometimes you can hit your hand. Not when you're learning, that's not going to happen very often, but um, you still can hit your hand on stuff, and you don't want your fingers swelling up and getting your ring stuck on there. So just if before you go and really do anything, take your rings off. Put them in your Put them in your pocket, leave them in your car, leave them at home, whatever. So, yeah. Um, I forgot I had my ring on, so I put it back in my pocket. So, next, wear a good, comfortable shirt. Um, so, I don't recommend crop tops because your midsection is sensitive and horse life is not sensitive at all. So you want to protect your midline. If you can tuck your shirt in, that's even better because it just protects everything. Um, so if you fall, if you, you know, scratch your belly on a saddle horn, uh, if you just go walking around, there's always stuff that you can get, like, your body scraped on. So um, having something that covers that part of you is good. I also, I personally wear long sleeves a lot because it protects my arms. If you look at my arms, I have scars all over my arms, specifically from horses. So the inside of my arms, you can't really see them anymore. The scars have kind of faded. But two years ago, when I had just gotten Lady, uh, or I had just gotten Lady work, like started under saddle, and I was going to go ride her. This was prior, like her fifth or sixth actual ride, and uh, like actual ride ever. And I was saddling her up, and I threw my lead rope across the across my arms while I was saddling, and um, she spooked, and I got a rope burn across my arm. That was not fun, um, and that's really when I started wearing long sleeves a lot more, is because I wanted to protect my arms there from anything. Um, in March earlier this year, I came off a of Chester. Uh, I was working Pickery and it, it was a little bit of a wreck. Not anybody's fault really. It was just craziness that happened. Anyway, Chester ended up in a bad spot and stepped on my arm. He was trying really hard not to, but he stepped on my arm with his back leg. And I still got a pretty good cut on my arm right here. Um, but if I wasn't wearing long sleeves, I know it would have been way worse. So. I didn't have to have stitches. It was like just at that point where they were like, you don't really need stitches. Like we could throw a stitch in, but we don't need it. But if I wasn't wearing those long sleeves, I would have had like, I know I would have had like 
kind of like road rash all up my arm from the arena sand and I would have had a much larger cut. But instead my sleeve on the shirt I was wearing is just like a little bit um, just fuzzied up. Like you could tell that it was worn right there and like on the top of my arm. But um, like it didn't tear and so it protected my arm quite a bit. It also pre prevents you from sunburning. You can see my tan line. I got an epic tan line going across my hand because I ride like this. I work like this a lot. So um, my hands are covered a little bit. So I'm pasty and so I burn really easy. I actually can burn through this particular shirt sometimes um, if it's really sunny out. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you're wearing long sleeves, it's just going to protect you from the sun a little bit more. Also with that, sunscreen is a great thing. Um, I don't I don't really like sunscreen, so I'm really bad and I don't wear it. But um, I still I try to protect myself. So if you are big on wanting to have good skin, um, sunscreen is great. And like shades, long sleeves is great. And you can get shirts that are sun, like specifically for working out in the sun, especially for equestrians, riding horses out in the sun. Like this is an equestrian shirt for the sun. Um, this is this one's made by Carrots Equine. Um, so you can also get like Ariat. I have several Ariat shirts that are very similar to this. Um, two that are like the mesh style, and then two that are like this soft material style. Um, so that, um, this one is for the ladies. If you're going to go ride horses and you have anything up here, any assets up here, um, make sure you're strapped in. Make sure, you know, you're good up there because otherwise your back will hurt really bad. And so, uh, just forewarning, but it's always a good idea to, you know, horse bras, great, or bras that, you know, hold them up, hold them in. Just a forewarning, um, I'm not sponsored by this company and I personally don't own anything by them either, but um, if you're like particularly large up there, um, she fits are supposed to be really good for horse riders. So just forewarning, um, the ho horses and don't match very well. So yeah. Um, don't let your back hurt really bad. So, forwarding. Next thing on that I would recommend, good long pants, um, particularly jeans. If you're writing English, you can wear breeches, um, but long pants is a highly recommended thing. Um, jeans, writing jeans, I would highly recommend. You can get jeans that have spandex in them like these ones. These are, I think these are Wrangler Willows. I'm not entirely sure, but they're one of like the spandexy stretchy jeans. They're the best. So I definitely, definitely recommend wearing jeans. Guys, you can get very similar ones. You don't have to wear the old traditional Wranglers that make you feel like you're walking like this because you can't bend your knees because they're tight and stiff. Um, so, but either way, a good pair of jeans. Um, no holes in them, I'd say, just because you're trying to protect your legs and you don't need whole, like a bunch of holes up and down your leg. So um, you can get away with skinny jeans, but your regular boot cut jeans are going to be great, especially going into footwear, which I'll go to in a second. Um, with jeans, if you have a nice, if you have like a good belt, it doesn't even have to be a really good belt. Just go to Walmart and get one of the 10 or $15 belts just to hold your jeans up. Um, it just saves you from doing this all the time and, you know, feeling all weird because you're walking around and whatever. So, good, good belt, good jeans. With the pants, yes, you can get away with riding in shorts depending on the facility and their requirements. But um, if you're wearing shorts, you can get like leather pinch or saddle pinch on the inside of your legs. You can get saddle sores. Um, so that's no fun. 
leather when you when you get like sweaty, it can it just grabs your skin and it's terrible. So long pants, um, leggings or like sweats can be super slick. So I don't re recommend those. Um, but jeans aren't typically that slick, so you can wear those. And they're you know they're meant for horse people really a lot of them. So just there's that. Um, so we covered that. Um, Closed-toed shoes, if you can get boots, like I have. I can't throw my leg up that far easily. Um, boots, so you guys can see. I think you guys can see me. But, um, if you can get boots, wear boots. If you can't, um, I mean, you can get away with, like, any closed-toed shoes, like, not Crocs, like, Crocs aren't really closed-toed shoes, like, uh, but, like, your moccasins, um, or, like, tennis shoes, but the reason I say boots is, number one, they're leather, so they're going to protect your tootsies so much better. Um, horses can step on your feet sometimes, they're not supposed to, but sometimes they do. They quite literally step on your toes. And so you want to protect your tootsies. So boots, especially like leather shoes, great. Um, they protect your feet. On the side of that boot, I have like damage to my actual boot because I've had horses step on me there. If it was my foot, I would no longer have a pinky toe. So um, just saying, and these boots are like a year old. So. But to, and I haven't even been stepped on that many times this year. It's just, you know, when they do step on your foot, they can hurt your foot pretty good. But if you're wearing leather, you're not, it's going to be pretty hard for them to actually break skin. It's going to be pretty hard for them to roll the bones. That's really how they would break your foot. They don't break it with pressure. They break it with a roll in your bone. So if you have proper fitting boots, it's going to be pretty hard for them to roll those bones apart and break them. Not that it can't happen, but it's a lot less likely. Um, if you're wearing sandals, it's easy to lose a toe um, if they step on your feet because it breaks the skin and it just separates everything. Um, not to be not, like gross or anything, but it's the truth. And so wear, always wear closed-toed shoes, especially if you can get leather closed-toed shoes, which really, that's boots. And, you know, Getting into that a little bit more with the boots is boots have the heel on them. You guys can see that heel on them. So that heel prevents your foot from going through your stirrup. And so it can save you or potentially your life, um, depending on what situations you may get yourself into with horses. Um, so having that safety is great. Not that you have to, but having boots is like the greatest thing for your feet, honestly. And if once you get your boots um, like broken, they're actually pretty comfortable. So, and you can get the high, like, so these boots are just regular old cowboy boots. You can get that fight. Anyway, you can get buckaroo boots. Like buckaroo style that come all the way up your leg and it'll per, like, just protect your shin and everything a little bit more. Not that when you're doing riding lessons, you're probably not going to need buckaroo style, but buckaroo style are good if you're riding English. Um, you can get away with, I think they're called jot up or something. Like they're the short boot. You can also get tall boots which cover your shin and everything. So there's that. With that, if you're wearing boots, wear long socks. Save your feet, save your heels, wear good long socks. Otherwise your feet will have as many scars and calluses and messed upness as mine do. You don't want that. So um, wear your long socks. Don't be like me. So, um, yeah, wear, wear your long socks. It's going to save you. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, other things 
I guess the only other thing that I can really think of. Um, chapstick, um, especially if you get like SPF chapstick, that would be good for you. Um, but don't put your chapstick on before you groom your horse, put it on afterwards, otherwise you get dirt and hair stuck to your lips and it's gross. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, but chapstick is good because, especially when you're out and about, it gets dry and hot and the sun can sunburn your lips and it's just a mess. So, anyway, I think that is it for what you should have at your writing lesson. Other than that, bring a good learning, excited attitude. And, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. The next video might be a while, but, um... I will still be continuing my channel. I am just moving in a couple weeks, so life's a little hectic. I graduated this past Saturday, so life's a little crazy. So it might be a while, but I will see you guys whenever the next time is. I'll continue posting equine shenanigans, because it just might be a little while. See ya.